Good morning everyone and welcome to our recorded service for Strain Presbyterian Church for the 26th of December 2021 for Boxing Day. It's lovely to have you join with us this morning and just as we gather in this way, again just trying to look after one another uh, and just pray that you would continue to know God's peace and blessing today as always. Just a couple of uh, announcements, first of all, um, just to remind you that the church office is closed until the 4th of January. Um, but Sunday the 2nd of January, it'll be Jim Campbell who'll be preaching, I'm off that Sunday. And then the plan this stage is for communion on the 9th of January. Um, obviously at the time of doing this recording, not quite sure if there will be any changes to regulations. Um, but if there are any changes to regulations, we will update you as and when they come along. Um, if you require any partial assistance at any stage, again, please just contact the church office. There is the answer machine is in place for the various times uh, and it'll be contact numbers available on there for any assistance that is required. And then just one other announcement to make at this stage, really, really joyful announcement to make at this time, just to say that Rachel and Adam Nugent welcomed their little baby daughter this week. Uh, so congratulations to Rachel and to Adam. And congratulations to Angus and Lynn, Granny and Granda, uh, and we just pray that uh, you would know God's peace and blessing. So as we gather this morning in this way as a church family, let us pause and let us pray together. Dear God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you again this Christmas. Um, as we gather today on Boxing Day, um, we, we thank you for your blessing upon us. Lord, we thank you for the love which brought Jesus from heaven to earth. We thank you for that first Christmas, for Jesus' time in the manger, for the journey that he went on for us. Lord, that's all because of your love towards us, and we thank you for that. Lord, it's easy for us uh, at times to pour out love in, every, for, in, in certain circumstances, and for this little baby born to Rachel and to Adam, Father, we know it will be loved and cared for, and we thank you for that. We just ask that you would bless them as a family. But Lord, just thank you that even though we are on earth, you are in heaven, even though there is that separation. We are not separated from your love at any time. Your love knows no limits, no bounds, uh, and it overcomes everything. And Lord, we thank you for that. Just as we come to your word now, Father, just help us to, 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 to see your word in a fresh way, something that we know so well. Help us to see it in a, in a new way. And please speak to us through your word, we pray. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. I want to read to you this morning part of the Christmas story, something which I know, which it's, it, you know it well, it, it's something which is read time and time again, it's been read at our carol service, but I want to read it to you this morning, it's, it's Matthew chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 9 to 15, and then 19 to 23. Let's hear God's word. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, it's the wise men. And the star which they had seen when it rose and went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said to the prophets, Out of Egypt I called my son. And down to verse 19. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. He said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judah in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in the dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went to live in the town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, 
that he would be called a Nazarene. Amen. We ask God to bless the reading of his word. Christmas time is a time whenever we gather together. It's a time whenever so many people want to get home for Christmas. And again, this Christmas has been difficult for some families. Some families haven't managed it because where they're trying to come from, um, they, they just can't travel. For other families, they are maybe far away from what the land that they would call home because of maybe troubles in their land, maybe things that have happened and they've had to move away and they can't return. It's too dangerous to return. Some people live in exile, as we say, and that's a really difficult thing. It's challenging because our hearts are breaking. We want to be in one place, but we can't. We are somewhere else. You know, when it comes to the Bible, exile is a recurring thing. It's something which comes back time and time again. If you start right at the very beginning of the Bible, you start even in Genesis and, and looking at Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They are exiled from the Garden of Eden because of sin. And they can never return there because of the sin that's in their lives. They're also exiled at that time from the presence of God. Because it tells us that God had come down into the Garden of Eden to walk in the cool of the evening and to talk to them. And, and they're put out of the garden. And if, if God returns to walk in that garden, they, they're not there. They will not walk in, in his presence again because of the sin, because of what has happened. Exile returns time and time again. God's children go to live in Egypt. And they're in slavery. Then they escape. Then they have their own lands. But then they don't follow God. So their own land gets raided. And so many of them get taken as slaves into exile then they, they return to their homeland but again they rebel against god and they're taken away and they live in exile and even whenever they do get to live in their own land quite often somebody's occupying it and at the time whenever jesus is born the roman empire are ruling the land they've invaded it they've taken it over the, the jewish people the israelites don't like it at all but they have to live with the Roman occupation. And for them, it's exile as such. It's not their land because Rome is there. And that's a thing which comes into the story of Christmas. Jesus at one stage goes and lives in exile. In Matthew 4, 14, it talks about how they left for Egypt. It says there, so he got up, that's Joseph, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. Because of what is happening, because Herod wants to kill this little baby who's been called the king of the Jews, because he's jealous and he wants to be the only ruler, then Jesus has to go and live in exile. We don't know for how long. We don't have that timeline in the Bible. There's different timelines outside of the Bible, but we just know it's for a period of time. And then when it is safe to return again, Joseph again is scared, he's warned in the dream. So then they head, instead of Bethlehem, where Jesus was born, they go back to Nazareth. And again, it's the fulfillment of prophecy. All of that might seem really difficult. It might seem really hard for Mary and Joseph, and I'm sure it was difficult making that journey into Egypt with a little baby. You've got to remember, Egypt doesn't hold good memories for the Israelites. It's where their people were enslaved. It's where, where Joseph did so much good and helped the Pharaoh at the time and was recognised for that. But then the people become slaves. They become builders and bricklayers and they're, they're forced into labour and then they leave under a, a very difficult time, a hard time in the wilderness. So to go back into Egypt is not an easy thing to do. But that's what God calls Joseph to do. And Joseph is faithful. Now there is that fear, you know, there's danger coming. Somebody's going to try and kill your little baby son. And as any parent would do, they, they protect their child. So they listen, to, Joseph listens to God and takes his family into Egypt. So Joseph is faithful to God. He doesn't try and rebel against him. He listens 
And even though it's a difficult journey to a difficult land, he trusts God because it's part of God's plan. Just like verse 15 said, out of Egypt I called my son. Again, it's a fulfillment of what has been prophesied so long ago. God is again showing people who this child is. He's giving the Israelite nation so many chances, so many opportunities to recognise the prophecy and to recognise this is the Messiah. This is the one I promised you so long ago. You can trust him. As we know, the Israelites don't, unfortunately. They reject Jesus instead, or most of them do. Joseph gets another dream to go back to the land where he comes from. And he goes to Nazareth, and again, that last verse in what we read, so was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Again, God gives another fulfillment of prophecy so that people will know who Jesus is. But the whole time, Jesus has a hard time. Jesus chooses to leave heaven to come to earth for us so we can have our sins forgiven. He's forced into exile in Egypt. And then when he comes back, maybe Bethlehem was where Joseph would have gone. Maybe because they were living there when the baby was born and we're not sure how long they spent there. Maybe Joseph has made connections there and as a carpenter, he's built up a business there. He's built up a reputation. And maybe it would have been his natural thing to go back there again. But instead, because of the threat, he goes to Nazareth. But Jesus, at so many times, there is that idea of exile and rejection or fear and running away. And that's something which continues with Jesus through his journey here on earth. If you think of another passage which we um, read at Christmas time from John chapter 1, part of that says in John 1 verse 11, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Jesus was rejected by his own people. So even whenever he was back home living, he was treated as a, a foreigner, as an outsider, as somebody living in exile. And maybe that's how we see our life here on earth. Maybe we see it as living in exile because we want to be in heaven. And we, we want to be away from this, this place which is broken, which is damaged with sin which is flawed, a place where people suffer and where there's illness and sickness and where there's misery and crying. And maybe we long for the happiness of heaven. But we're here for a reason. God has us exactly where we are, going through what he has given to us for a reason. And we all struggle with it. And it's no secret that other people have struggled with it. Paul um, himself struggled with it. When you look at what he says in Philippians 1, let, let me read it to you, Philippians 1, verses 21 to 24. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am going on, if I am to go on living in the body, what will, this will mean fruitful labour for me, yet what shall I choose? I don't know. I am torn between the two desires, I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Paul was torn. Paul wanted to be in heaven, but yet he knew that God had a role for him on earth, and he knew there was still work to be done in the role that God had given to him, which was bringing the gospel to the part of the world called the Gentiles, those who were not Jews or Israelites. And yet, Paul wrestles with that. We all wrestle with where we are. We all wrestle with the struggle of, of knowing, oh, I don't want to be here, but I want to be somewhere better. But we forget that God has called us to be exactly where we are today. You know, in a way, we are all exiles here on earth. But it's remembering that God has a plan to use us. And use us in a mighty and a powerful way for his glory and honour. 
Now we may not see ever that plan. We may not see what happens with that plan, but we are part of God's plan and we have a role to play. But we have to accept that along the way it is difficult and it is challenging. Jesus was that ultimate example of that difficulty and of that challenge. Jesus knew before he left heaven where his journey would take him to. We thought about that yesterday in church on Christmas Day, about the journey of Jesus from heaven to earth to a cross and back to heaven again. But that journey was necessary for us to have forgiveness of sins. God puts us on a journey, asking us to follow him and trust him. And along that way, God will use us. God will use us to be an example of his, of his love, of his light. God will use us to speak to others. God will use us to, to help others. Maybe to bring them peace and comfort. Maybe to bring them assistance in a very practical way. Maybe to bring them God's word and share it with them so that they can trust as well. We just don't know. And, and like the children of Israel, as they followed um, the pillar of cloud by day and, 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 and fire at night time on that journey through the wilderness, for us, maybe this journey on earth is a bit of a wilderness at times. Remember, we are exiles on earth, but there's a plan on it. There's always a plan on it. There's always God's will. But it's trusting that. And it's trusting that he knows it. It would be easy to look back on this past year and reflect on the negatives. Look how bad things have been with COVID. Look at the people who have been ill. Look at the people who have lost loved ones. Look at how we've had to stop meeting at times. But let's flip that on its head. Let's look at how we've used this sort of means of communication and media. Let's look at how this has gone out around the world. Let's look at how the, the, the internet and the web have been used in such a positive way to let people know how much God loves them and cares for them. Let's think of the way we've been able to stay in contact. Let's think of the lives that have been touched during this time. Let's think of those who have just realised that in the midst of all that's been going on, that they need God. Let's think of the folks who have turned to God and whose lives have been transformed by him. You know, it's easy always to see the negatives. It's easy always to see the bad and to think the worst when actually God can take any situation and use it for his glory and honour. Again, if you think back to the children of Israel, if you think back to their, their time in Egypt, and if you think back to the story of Joseph and his brothers, think of what Joseph said to his brothers. They were really nervous in the end when they found out who he was, and they thought he was going to do something to them. They told them, you did to me something that you meant to do me harm, but God has used it for good. They sold Joseph into slavery. They pretended that he'd been killed by a wild animal. Joseph, yes, works in Potiphar's house, then he's in prison, but then he gets to interpret Pharaoh's dream. If he hadn't been in prison and met the people he met there, he wouldn't have been invited to Pharaoh's house to interpret that dream. He wouldn't have been able to tell Pharaoh what was coming and, and how God uh, gave him the, the knowledge of the, what to do to, to help the land. He wouldn't have been in that position of power and then his family are cared for and looked after. Something which his brothers thought would bring him harm, which was bad for him. God uses for good. You know, we're all doom and gloom about everything that's going on around us. But yet we fail to see how God can bring good out of that. We fail to see how God can use that to spread the word around this world, to, to draw people to himself. And that's what we have to celebrate and to focus upon. Yes, I know it's difficult at Christmas time if families are not together, that if we are separated, but at least we can do this. We can have FaceTime, we have, we have Zoom, we have, we have different other means of keeping in contact. But think of how God can use all of that because it's part of his plan. 
Let's not think that God is not in control, because God is. God is always in control. Yes, things will happen and God will allow things to happen, but it gets to a point when God stops it. And God says, enough is enough, because he is always in control. Because he is always the person who loves us and cares for us. Christmas is all about love. The love that brought Jesus to the earth. The love which brings us salvation. The love which God pours out on us freely. The love which is being poured out just as much today as it was then. The love which people reject just as much today as they did then. But love which comes without cost to us, without um, limitation, without restrictions, without prerequisites. Love which is free and available. Are we going to accept that love? Are we going to let God take us on a journey? Are we going to let him take us out of our comfort zone into somewhere completely different? Are we going to let him use us in a mighty and a powerful way? Because that's what he wants to do. Jesus was in exile. And then when he came back, he was rejected. Don't feel that you're unique. Realise that Jesus has done it before you. Realise that you're following in his footsteps and then give it over to God. And for the year that lies ahead, wow, what might God do with us this year? How might he transform us? What's, what's going to happen? We just don't know. But let's be excited about it. Let's be enthusiastic about it. Let's not be down in the mouth and do about it. Let's not be doom and gloom. But let's get alongside one another and support each other in whatever way we can. Let's look out for one another. Let's share God's love with one another. Let's see what God's going to do. Let's pause. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for your word this day. Thank you for what it says to us, how it teaches us. Lord, thank you for the excitement of being involved in all that you're doing. Lord, you are great and you are wonderful. We know that ultimately our home is in heaven with you and we are exiles here on earth at this time. But Lord, please just use us. Use us in whatever way you want. Show us what to do to follow your will. Until that day when if you do bring us home to be with you in our heavenly home. But Father, thank you. And continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks folks for joining in this morning. It's been great to have you with us. And I do pray that you have a peaceful new year and that you enjoy yourselves. Please remember to stay safe. Please remember whenever you're out and about to, to look out for one another, give each other a little bit of distance. Keep your face masks on if you can. Um, just, just keep looking out for each other. And as we come back to church, God willing, in the new year again, we'll continue to be careful, to, to care for one another and to help one another. And again, if there's anything that needs to be done, if there's any needs out there at the time, Again, if you want to phone the church phone line, you'll hear the, in the answer machine the different numbers uh, and, and you, know, you can get in contact um, or you can phone me direct. Just, just reach out. But in the meantime, folks, take care and God bless.